Welcome to Ham Radio TV. I'm Jason, KM6FAK, the guy that's running the camera and getting these up on YouTube for you to enjoy. In this video, Kevin, N6VLF, will explain how to build a dipole. This took place at one of our monthly club meetings here in Vacaville, California. Our club's name is the Vaca Valley Radio Club. Hit that subscribe button so you stay up to date with the channel and you won't miss a new video. That, that's what we're going to talk about is a half wavelength dipole wire antenna. So, and the other sheet that has all the verbiage on it, that's by the way, those are right out of the AWRL handbook. Those aren't me, that's from people that are way smarter than me. And they put it in there, and it's just a really good example of an old school classic dipole antenna. And then the other sheet is just the information that gives you a little bit of the math behind that antenna on how to, how to construct it, okay? But they don't talk about feed line length, they don't talk about the balance, they don't talk about, they do talk about the balance of the antenna, how important it is. But if you follow those instructions, you'll get the, the antenna will work. And if you do a few, few other little tweaks to it, the antenna will work better. So the first thing, how many of you guys know and you have your cheat sheet, so, you know, just raise your hand. If you want to know the length of your dipole antenna, how would you do that? Call Kevin. Call Kevin. <laughs> 468 divided by the what? Be like megahertz. 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 Frequency in megahertz. So where did they, did anybody know where they came up with the 468? Something to do with the speed of light. Yeah. Is that what it is? No. It's nine. This is a half wavelength, or approximately half wavelength formula. And the 468 is what the AWRL or somebody, I couldn't tell you. The real number is 492. We're not going to dwell on that. That's without the velocity factor. Who knows, do you guys know what the velocity factor is, the VF of your cable? The velocity factor, which is really going to become really apparent when we show this up right here, the VF of your cable is going to be something lower than one. One would be perfect. One would be the speed of light. There's no, it doesn't slow it down. So a really, 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 really good cable, like wire antenna, you can figure <coughs> about a velocity factor of about 0 0.9, 0 0.95, let's say 0.95. So if you took that number, anybody got a calculator handy? Take point, take take 492 and multiply it times 0.95, and what do you get? It's keep remember that these numbers are approximate because even that number is not exact. What is it? 452. 452? 468, not 468, 492 times 0.95. 467.4. Thank you. So they rounded it up to 468. And the reason they did that is if you go onto Wikipedia or look online. Whatever, look up, look up the speed of light. Well, the speed of light, they'll come right off. It says approximation is 300 million meters per second. That's pretty, pretty fast. So you take the three, you take the million off. All six of the zeros, it leaves 300. 300 divided by frequency in megahertz, which is our four for a half wavelength. But if you did 300 divided by frequency in megahertz, it'd come out in meters, right? So think about it, if you had 300 <coughs> divided by, uh, you know, uh, three megacycles, what's that? One megacycle. No, three, 300 divided by three, Three, right? 100. Three is 100? That's 100 meters, right? So what's uh, 300 divided by 3.5? Damn, this club is hard. <laughs> no, that would be a test. I'm just wanting to, the light bulb's going to go off in a second. Who did 85.71? It's eight, about 80 meters. Yeah. So, so there you go. So you take the, the, the 300 divided by that, and it brings you down. So the 80 meter band, that's about 80 meter, that's about how big it is. That's how big the wavelength is. So we're not going to worry about any of that garbage, because they already figured it out for us. Who knows what the number 234 divided by frequency in megahertz, gets you. Quarter wave. Quarter wave. Exactly. Get you the quarter wave. So look at that sheet. What does that sheet show you? It shows you the full half wave, which is a 468 divided by frequency in megahertz. 
and the, the quarter wave side of it would be half that, 234, right? So what they did is, is they took that, the ARRL and the folks that came up with it said, you know, uh, copper wire in general is somewhere in the neighborhood of 0 0.9, 0 0.95 velocity factor, and they just did it for us. So we have to worry about it. So the 460, that's where it comes from. That's what you be aware of where that number came from, because that's what we're going to use. And they always tell you to make it a little bit longer because you're going to cut it the length. That's exactly you're right. Cut it down. Because if you, because if depending on the wire and depending on the velocity <coughs> factor of the wire, whether it's insulated or not, how thick it is, how they manufactured it, is it oxygen free, all this garbage that I personally don't care about. So what they're going to do, what we're going to do, is exactly what Brian said. We're going to make our dipole a little bit longer. So if we were going to build a dipole for, let's pick a, a little common uh, band, 80 meters, what would we do? This is interactive. I'm not going to talk to you guys. Somebody help me out. 468 divided by 80. Oh, no, no. 468 divided by 80. By the, by the frequency. So, yeah, yeah. What, if, what, if, what if we want to talk in the middle of the phone band? So, the, the 80 meters is basically. 38.40. Um, Pardon me? 3.8, maybe? 38.40. 38. 38.9. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think 38.9. So, we're, we're, at, we're at the phone band, phone band somewhere around 38, 38.40, 38.50, somewhere around there, right? So, 3.85. So, if we went. 468 divided by 3.85, right? <coughs> so what's the, what's the, uh, what is that? Somebody calculate that. You guys got a calculator. Yeah. I mean, even, who wants to, I have a calculator here. <coughs> Somebody want to calculate? 121.55. Is that what that is? Sounds yep. good. 121.55. Uh -huh. So we're going to build our antenna, right? And our antenna is going to have that insulator on that piece of paper in the middle, right? So that's 128 feet. No, no. 128. I mean, 128. No, this is the freak. This is the 468 divided by 3.85 megahertz, right. right? But that'll give you the length, right? Length in feet. feet. So this is right. what feet? Yeah. Okay. Divided by four. Nope. Divided by two. two. Exactly. Divided by two. So what is that? Oh, because you're splitting in half in the middle. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. So 61 what's this feet. divided by two? 60 feet. 60. 60.7. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to say, we're going to do this. You're going to add a foot to each side. We're going to go, it's 61 feet, right? And what did we hear earlier from one of our, our seasoned hams? What would you do? So if I built this up. Six inches. Yeah. Right? That sounds about right. So there's my insulator, and here's my feed point. And this is should start looking remarkably similar to that picture. That picture. So Yours we green. we came out to 61 feet, but what do we want to make this? 60, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, because my, my egg insulator, I, I like to use uh, the dog bone insulators, or I like to use uh, PVC pipe, and I just drill a hole in it, and then I push it through. And that way, when, you're t when you can take that wire, and it'll loop through, and it'll go like this, right, on both sides. So now, what I can do is I started out, I did, I did 60, I took it out to 63, 63 feet to build, so I was at, my start out point was 63 feet. And then what I, what's, what's something that you got to remember to do? I'm kind of forcing you guys to think. Mechanically, from here to here, on both sides, what do you want to do when you do this? That would be equal length. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Right. Literally get your tape measure out, hold it right there, and move it out, and make this one. If you start it out, and you said, yeah, I took a sequence. This works out where it's 62 feet, just, just for fun. We're going to make that exactly 62 feet, and we're going to make that exactly 62 feet. And then we're going to hook it up to our, our, our MFJ, our Comet, or we're going to use our radio. We're going to use whatever we get our hands on 
to start checking the match on this antenna, right? And then when we start moving it, if I am too, if I am too low in frequency, I'm below my target, what do I need to do? Short 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 short. Right. So, and then what you can do is you just, you can, you can calculate it, and we're not going to go to the trouble to do that, because it's a lot more, it's a lot easier when you're standing out there. Because you did what that gentleman right there said, you're just going to take it, and you're going to unwrap it, and you're going to pull it back. And what I do is it, to experiment, I do about an inch on each side, exactly an inch to start out with. Why would you do that? And you mark down, you write down what your frequency, whatever your frequency, where it was resonant at, and then you take off an inch, we'll call it F1, and then F2 is our new, is a new measurement. And I wrote it down, but I only did an inch. What did that? What does that tell me? It gives me an op, gives me an opportunity to figure out how much I have to move it to vary for how much length per frequency. So length length versus frequency. That's all oh, it is. Yeah. It's just and a really dumb way. Just a proration. Exactly. It's just a very very <laughs> simple way to give you an indicator of which way you gotta go. That way, now that you know the inch, you go, oh man, I'm still way off, and I actually have done this. I was way off, and I go, oh, no, man, that's too much. And you go, you, you whack it down, and you go, I'm going to take that down to 61 feet. Take that down to 61 feet. And then you go up, and you go, oh, gee, now it's too high. And you know how much you took off. So now you've got your chart. You know what one inch did. You know what the extra did. And now, the third time, what's probably going to happen? You're going to right. interpolate to get it right. Exactly. You're going to have enough numbers using your wire that you wrapped around, your numbers that you took kept track of over here, and you write all that down, and you just come over here on your little cheat sheet, and you're going to figure it out. You're going to go, oh, that needs to be X, whatever X is going to be. So that gets you really, really close. Another thing is this wire. What kind of wire do you think we ought to be using for Green. This? Green? <laughs> we should, if you want to work that good. I've used the copper and been green in a while. Copper would be okay. green. green. Can right. you use, can we use bare, uh, bare wire? Yeah. Yeah. I try yeah. aluminum. You can. can you you only, what's the problem with aluminum? It, it has velocity. different velocity, so you're going to yeah. have to... You have to figure that out, but that's okay. What's the main problem with aluminum wire? Corrosion. Oxidation. Be no. uh, Oxidation. Yes, between what? Dissimilar metals. Different types of wire. Exactly. And where is that going to be? At the top of the core. So, you got to worry about your dissimilar metals. Lumox. Lumox. You can use that. Another thing you can do, and I, I don't recommend this, but you can get those little teeny, they're, in, they're inline splices, they're called ALCU, and they handle from like a, their electrical product. In one side, you put, you, you put some antioxidant on the aluminum, stick it in there, screw it down really, really tight, the other side, you put your copper in there, put that stuff on there, and then and then you just make this first little part to get to the aluminum wire. Another thing is aluminum wire too. Depending on its uh, uh, how malleable it is, it's hard. It, you got to be careful to break it. You know, moving back and forth. Some guys try to do that with loop loop antennas, and you know, they get I get I've seen mixed opinions. You know, it, it works. Alien wire. Barbed wire. What about barbed wire? I actually tried it. I went over to, uh, <laughs> I did this. I literally went right. over to Pacific Hardware. I bought, I go, wow, electric fence wire. Wouldn't that be awesome? Mm. Yeah. About 5,000 feet, right? <laughs> I, put up, I put up a thousand foot loop, right? I hooked it up and I stuck it on my MFJ and I went, holy cow, it's <laughs> 50 ohms. I got stupid lucky and it's <laughs> flat. And I went, this is going to work great. I hooked my transmitter up and it loaded up great. Nobody can hear me. Why can't nobody hear me? Too low. Too much uh, resistance and heat. DC resistance. You know what I built? Oh, a big giant dummy load. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I built a. So then I got to thinking, what did I do wrong? So I pulled. What's that? Explain that again. I. Use, I rent thing, and, and I put my meter on it and it said 50 ohms, 
and then nobody could hear me very good. And I was hearing people okay, but not that great. I go, man, I got a thousand feet of wire out there. So I grabbed my multimeter, just a dumb ohm meter, and I put it across the leads. What do you think I read? Zero. 50. 50 ohms. Really close to 50 ohms DC. What would you test it with first? I just, I just uh, stuck the radio on it, <coughs> looked at oh. it, and as to, because it was 50 ohms. Oh, you didn't put a you didn't put a But even if I put that on there, it would read, it would, it would have read 50 ohms, because it was 50 ohms, like putting a resistor on there. It tricked, it tricked me, because I was dumb. I got, so the, the makeup of that wire is super resistive, so that was a perfect example of just because you have a great match, does it mean you have a great antenna? No. We're, that's another thing. I want to make sure you guys understand. Tonight, we are talking about a resident antenna. It's made to operate on the band that you want to operate on. We're not talking. To, we're not going to talk about off-center fed dipoles tonight. We're not going to talk about multi-band verticals because that's a whole other animal. Fan dipoles. Yeah. Uh, well, we will talk for a moment about a fan dipole. Yes. So, dumb question, but no, um, so when. When you have the wire, you've got 63 feet there, and you're going to say, okay, I'm going to make it 62, and I'm going to run it through my insulator, I'm going to wrap the wire around, mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. itself, okay? Mm -hmm. if the, the, it, but there's still 63 feet of wire in there, oh. but, it, but it's wrapped around itself, so, it becomes but, like it, it, but that, since you wrapped it around it, it's not going to see it like that? Correct. It, even if it's insulated? Yeah, it becomes yeah. one conductor. Because oh, wait a minute, it's insulated, that's a different story. Can't story. Can't no, it's not. <laughs> well, it's, what happens is, is I'm glad you are laughing. I don't believe them. Okay. They, they, what happens is electrons whiz around it and just fall off and don't know where they're at. <laughs> no, it, it, when you wrap it around it, yeah. When you pull it around and it runs parallel to it, yeah. It's just the the, uh, the, the common mode just makes it go away. Yeah. It acts like one piece of wire. Yeah. You have to worry about that. But we're talking about resident antennas. So we started out at 3.85. And that's what we're going to talk about. So now we know <clears throat> that we need to come up with our little cheat sheet, monkey around with it, and then figure out figure out where we're at. Now, what, go ahead. What wire are you actually? We talk about you know bob wire fencing. That what wire are you using? Just copper wire. I'm using wire. dumb yeah. copper wire. My antenna at my house is literally made out of uh, eight, 16 or 18 gauge uh, tinned copper wire. That's all it is. It's uninsulated. My feed point on my 80 meter antenna is approximately uh, 52 feet, and it's almost exactly this size. And it's fed with it's fed with coax. Now, and uh, what gauge? My the, mine is about is I can't remember if it's 16 or 18. It's is cheap. It, can you use braided wire? Yes, you can. There's actually a company online. It's called FlexWeave. They make flex weave, you can tie knots in oh, it. It's great you can you can make a jump rope with it. I mean this stuff's awesome. And yes, the the thicker wire, better quality, thicker wire will give you a little bit better bandwidth. You'll actually I'm not gonna go into the, all that tonight, but you've got these guys that build these. They're uh, they you'll look at them and the feed points here and there'll be a little bar here and you'll see uh, two wires that are exactly the same length and they're right on the side of it, right? It didn't make it any longer, but it made it more uh, thicker. Thicker, okay. So and it, and it helps with the bandwidth. Birdcage. So that's a, a version of it, but we're not going to go down that road tonight. We just want to know how to build. What I've what I've been listening to on the repeater, guys, is everybody has an idea how to build an antenna. Everybody's talking about not everybody. A lot of people. I want to include everyone. A lot of people talk about how am I going to get an HF antenna at my house that works? What's the best antenna? The best simple antenna is a dipole. And if anybody went down to Quartzsite, and three or four of our members did, Bruce uh, McCaskey was one of them, and he went to the class. And what did those guys, and those guys are smart, what did they say? Build a dipole out of wire. Do you have to go online and buy one of the commercially made ones where the guy goes, I made this wire out of solid copper, uh, number eight gauge, and it's perfectly tuned, at 3.85, this insulator is made out of space age material that I can't tell you what it is. This is also made out of a space age material that we don't even know what it is, but it works great. 
and they charge you, you know, two or three hundred bucks for this antenna. Yeah. Even now, Alpha, even Alpha Delta, you buy an Alpha Delta, mm -hmm. multi band, fan, fan radio, mm -hmm. fan dipole, or just a regular single band dipole, they will always tell you that you have to adjust the length. Yep. because it's going to vary based upon how close it's into the trees, yes. how high in the air it is, right. all that stuff. That is another reason <laughs> the height off the ground, if you can get a quarter wavelength off the ground, off your lowest frequency, yeah. How many people can get this feed point up 60 61 feet? feet. Not very many. So I got, yeah, some places won't let you, some, it's physically impossible. Mine's I'm, 35, I know. I'm very fortunate. It doesn't it, make that much of a difference. It, it will a it, little bit. It, like it, it, you know what? The answer to that is maybe. Because <laughs> what happens is, is you're, it's measuring it against ground. Now, is that dirt? Or is that the electrical ground where the wave comes down and sees it? I got well, a quick one for you. Sure. Time tested antennas like this. Mm -hmm. Look at World War II submarines. Look at the Titanic. They're all using that. They all do. A lot of yeah, them do. They have the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the radio sunk the ship. Guy was a, guy was that a, was listening to his radio man. Yes. But well, sometimes your ground, your quarter wave is literally from the dirt to here. Sometimes it's from five feet under the dirt to here. And depending on your water table, the ground, the makeup of your of your soil and all that kind of stuff, to which I have no idea what mine is or isn't, but it, it might be. So the general rule of thumb is you look at the, your ground and you get it as high above it as you can. And I did an experiment. I had my 80 meter antenna down at about 35 feet along with my 40 meter antenna. And they did work quite well. And then I decided one day to take my fat body and climb up all the way to the top of my tower put an arm off to the side and a new pulley, and I redid the antenna system, and I literally, these wires are balanced within less than a quarter of an inch. As best I could pull them as taut as I could, and I, or I laid them on the ground, and I got them as close as I could. We're not gonna talk about this tonight, it's a whole other subject, but I also put a, my bowel in here. Okay, we'll put the bowel right there. But, all, and then we're going to stop at, at this because balance is a whole other night. It takes your balanced antenna and hooks it to your unbalanced coax. Okay, everybody knows that, but let's not go into We only have a little bit more time, so we'll talk about I'm going to actually, if you're interested, I'll do this. If you're not interested, I won't do it. We'll bring in a, another machine that will hook up to the TV and you can visually look at the frequency response of a balance. You'll see it up there and you'll, it'll show you what its SWR is and what its frequency range is. Will it work on 80 meters? Will it work on 20 meters? <clears throat> will it work on 160 or will it, or is it so inefficient it can't work? And why would you want a different balance for 160, 80, and 20? And then maybe a different balance depending on who makes it uh, for 80, 40, and 20. So we want to go with that. There's different strokes for different folks. Like, like four to one, nine to one, that kind of, that kind of thing. All of the above. Okay. See, and in this instance, this would be a one to one. Okay. This would be a one to one current balance. I don't really don't want to go down that road, guys. It's too, it's too complicated. Yes. So what? What did you see when you raised your? Yeah, let's get that. When, right, I, when, did, I, when did, I raised my you raise it up, did, did you end up with an with a <coughs> slightly, heat, slightly, or, or were you or a flat top? That slightly right? inverted. Because you, you mentioned your your altitude at the feed point. Yep. But it's going to kind of it's going to come down. Yeah. The only the, the thing about that is is we we're using 50 ohm coax. Okay. So if you took this antenna and we held it perfectly flat out in free space, we can reach out there with our meter measure. It's going to be about 70 ohms, give or, give or take a few ohms, okay? Then if we take it, we, we drop them down a little bit. As we drop it down, it gets closer and closer to 50 ohms. And then as you get closer and closer and closer, the big it turns into a big old capacitor and it gets worse and worse and worse. Pretty soon it's a short because you short them out. So it, you want it to be somewhere in the 50 ohm region. That's why I was telling people, just because you get this thing uh, 
you, it shows uh, you get a good SWR. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean it's a approximately like forty-five degree angle. Yeah, if, it, if you do a textbook, but I hardly ever do that unless it's a textbook. Is there such a thing as seventy ohm coax? Uh, yeah, yes, but we use fifty ohm transfer. Yeah, but you can use seventy ohm transfer. Yeah, 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 we're not going to talk about balance. You already know if it's flat, it's about around 70, 72 ohms. We drop, we inverted V, it gets closer to 50 ohms. Now, keep in mind these are all approximate values because if you stick a meter on there, you know, everybody's antenna is going to be a teeny bit different. Just like you said, as you as asked me, when I went up higher, mine worked better. The reason it worked better is if you can get your 80 meter antenna way up in the air and then measure it correctly, your match will be better. It'll be closer to 50 ohms. It'll be resident and it'll behave. And another thing Move is when you're got when you're taking antennas and you got a whole lot of trees. That's my next and a whole lot of trees and your oh. antenna's really, really close to the trees and it rains, now your trees are more conductive and stuff can change, right? But aren't trees an insulator? Grounding, right? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> not, for, not for RF. <laughs> the good thing about a tree oh. is is you can take your know, like Dacron Road, like, yeah. go into the tree, make yourself a, 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 a anchor point, right? Yeah. Come out a distance, put your, your egg insulator or your dog bone insulator. Now it's away from the tree, right? right. Yeah. So you can go between it. And then in the middle, what happens often is you put, you put up your 50, 60 foot vertical <coughs> pole with a pulley and you pull your feed point way up there. And now you can go, here's my 80 meter one, here's my 40 meter one, here's my 20 meter one. And it's, it's in the clear, similar to a fan dipole. It can be fed off one piece of coax, which we'll talk about that later. <coughs> yes. In fact, just standing in the middle with your analyzer, you will affect it. Absolutely. The, the higher, the lower the frequency in your body. That's why I was going to bring. I actually was going to bring a six-meter dipole and show you guys. It's too big. The the roof and it, the the grid and stuff affects it because six-meter band, right? The waves how big? 18 feet. Cut it in half, it's nine feet. So guess what? I can't do it in here. So I have to, I gotta make a little baby one, you know, and then we'll, we'll show you that on a two meter or something. So you can't be right there. So, any questions about a basic dipole? Thank you. Yeah, if you're, I always wanted to know this. If you run a dipole from trees, yeah. does it matter if the wire hits the tree branches? Yes. And what does it do to it? It'll detune it if it gets if it's conductive enough. Okay. If it, it just depends on the tree, depends on how much wire goes in there. <laughs> if it's winter, or if it's winter, does the wire <laughs> ever get hot? <laughs> what? Does the wire get real hot? It yeah. could if you put a power to it. But the average yeah. piece, the average wire, our legal limit output is fifteen hundred watts. Yeah. The the unit that I have at the moment will generate fifteen hundred watts output of continuous carrier with sixteen gauge wire. At residence, remember, key, we are talking about resident antennas that are made to operate on the frequency we're operating on. We're not trying to trick something to do something it's not supposed to. That's when you got mismatches and you generate heat and other things happen. You can cram 1,500 watts down the throat of this thing all day long. All you got to do is put a piece of coax on it and it'll handle the power. So it won't catch a tree on fire and burn down everything. No. It shouldn't. I'll remember you said that. You're saying dipole. We understand the 72 ohms in the mm -hmm. summer. Working for 50 ohms. Now, you take that 50 ohms, and, and that's laterally, straight out. Now, now what, what, what electrically happens when you take that, instead of a, just a, a slope or a drooping curve? Oh, they're at a different angle. And, and, you, cut, and you come at, um, I want to shoot to you, so you're right down the crotch of the V, mm -hmm. and in, a sloping V antenna. An oblique angle. It changes your impedance a little bit, and it changes your, your uh, directionality. So and, that, and if you really want to know the answer to that, invest in the easiest way to do it is you, you go through the AWRL antenna compendium. It goes into great detail about that. Or you can get Easy Neck. Put on your put on your Easy Neck. Put on your laptop. Easy Neck. Yeah, what it does, it's a program that you can emulate different um, antenna uh, setups. You can do uh, beams, uh, white or wire dipoles, all kinds of stuff. So when you see these guys, like the dude that made uh, K9RM, uh, Chuck on the East Coast, he goes, built a 14 or some insane 
a giant 40 meter wire beam. Well, he easy necked it. And he put it, and he's modeled it. He put this thing up. He's S1000 over here, man. Which That's is a couple, easy, easy, E A S Y, neck, N E C K. Easy, easy, Echo Zulu, Echo Zulu N E C, easy neck. Easy N E C. Yeah, just Google it, it'll come up. The, the guy is really nice. He uh, charges a, ver, a modest amount of money for, and he sells two versions the pro version and the day to day version. I had the, the day to day version until my laptop blew up. And I was stupid. I got the downloadable version, so now I gotta call the man and ask him, can you please look up my serial number and send me another one, please? Because I like I lost it. So anyways, any more questions about the basic dipole? Did it help anybody just talking about on these yeah. connectors? Or is that yeah. like you talking about the tree and now you want to get a little rope that needs one of these supports? Absolutely. That's a great question. Once you look at your little diagram, the insulators on the end, you know what's not good to do? is to run right up to your, your metal frame on your aluminum building, screw your insulator to it, and then run your antenna right off that. It's way too close. So what you want to do is put you know, an eye hook on there, hook your insulated Dacron rope, come out a distance that will work for you, hook it to the, uh, to the side of that, and you leave a little extra. That way when you're tuning your antenna in and out, and you go, yay! I've, I've reached resonance of the frequency I want, and my bandwidth is good. Then you go out and secure everything. And just keep in mind, slapping up a dipole, how long did it take us to slap up your dipole, Don, at your house the, the second time? You should see this guy. It's like the, the road runner, you know? I put he went up in no time. To, oh, he's that. lying. <laughs> it took us, he's, no, it took us like three hours. Three or four and hours. It, and it's still not right. <laughs> what we did, we took, we built this antenna without this ballon to prove a point. Because you don't have to do that. What you can do when you're on a budget and you, or you just don't want to do it, you just take your coax and you bring, you bring your coax up and you make yourself a choke. You put five, six, seven turns and you come up here and now you've got yourself a really... Super simple, <coughs> nobody measured it, you just did it because it was what you had, current bound, and it just sticks it in there. And that will do a little bit of it. If you, there's actually, this is actually in some of the book, you're shaking your head, you've probably seen it before, haven't you? It's actually in textbooks some places. I've got it. You have it? Oh, yeah. cool. So it actually, it actually works. This can be measured too. This is one of those nerdy things. We did that on our CB antennas back in the 70s. Yeah, you can do that. So, the low, and by the way, the lower the frequency, the more turns you need. That's what I was about to ask. So, based on the frequencies, yeah. this, the and you can look it up in the, you can look it up in the AWRL okay. antenna books, and they give you recommended uh, diameter and number of turns for the frequency. Say, you know, and then they give you one that made about 21 feet. <laughs> yeah. a piece of PVC pipe. Yeah, that works too. Except the only problem is we ended up putting it up next to the the, the, the mask. You uh -huh. to on to, you know? The mask coupled into it. Uh, it's interesting you bring that up, Skip, because the, when we talk about balance, I'm going to bring in some uh, commercially made balance and some ones that we made. And we actually made them on PVC pipe. They're this tall. They're wound with dumb, inexpensive Archie 58 intentionally, not double shielded. And uh, we use stainless steel hooks and connectors. Then we put a SO239, the female root male connector, to make that. It's, but I don't want to go into that tonight. No. You know. And then we'll, if you guys want, we'll set up the equipment and we'll show you how it works. Because mm -hmm. just telling you about it, it's kind of like, okay, you gave me a bunch of numbers and stuff. But once you see it, you see the thing, you see the chart, you see how it works, then you kind of go, okay, that makes sense. And then you might want to go home and make one yourself because you're not that hard. I'd about. like to see that sometime. It's yeah, very it's I would too. <laughs> and then there's a, then there's the super cool ones that are made on toroidal cores. You know the uh, the uh, powdered iron cores. Yeah. They're different. Like the different numbers. There's 43s and 60 something, <clears throat> and I haven't memorized it. But the red one is pretty common. And you wind a current bound two windings on this side and two windings on this side, and then they're all they all look the same. But then we just we just connect them. We take this winding, this winding, connect it, and then the other two connect it. Do the same at the bottom, and I'll draw it and show it for you. If you wind that right, you've just made yourself the super duper current bound that will work from 80 meters 
all the way up to, oh geez, 30 megacycles, and that thing is awesome. Now that, that works good uh, ballon, the homemade loop-de-loop -loop ballon. Mm -hmm. That's with a coax fit. This is a version of the coax one, yes. Okay, yeah, but, but you're feeding that with the coax. Up. This is just your coax line coming up, and it's just... Uh, it's up, I tried that, and, and, and that's where I got the... Yeah, uh, you can do that. But then I said, I figured, well, nuts. Why, why am I fighting the losing battle here? So my tuner, I've got one of those I was telling you about. It's one of those that my, my tuning coil inside tapped foil inside of them had a quarter-inch uh, copper tubing, mm -hmm. believe it or not. And and, and, and and it allows me to, to use the ladder line going out. So I'm feeding the oh, yeah. the ladder line. Okay. You can do that. And we're going to talk that, that. You keep in mind, when you do that, yeah. you need to calculate your, which we're going to talk about. We're going to get to that. That's a really cool part. But you could use a camera and everything. Um, you want to be on half wavelength multiples. Correct. That's the next thing we're going to talk about. Any more questions about the basic dipole? You guys should go home and build this now, right? And the one you built, how are you suspending the other, the two oh, these Yeah. Oh, just, I literally went to Home Depot, and I'm that nerdy guy, well, not nerdy, more like weird guy, that walks around, go to the plumbing department and the electrical department, and you find there's, there's three different kinds of tubing, four. There's uh, rigid conduit for electrical, okay? Mm -hmm. There's IMC. Intermediate conduit for electrical, and Home Depot has a little bit of both. The difference between the two is the the internal diameter. So the schedule you, of it. Yes, exactly. Schedule. The Come IMC on. is thinner than this, so your ID there's more room. So you can. So what you do is you go. You start. At the, I start at the bottom, and I got a, I got a, like a, a inch and a half piece of pipe, and then I went and got a piece of IMC. Or, or I used the bottom piece of IMC, the next one I used to use a dome piece of pipe, and the third piece I used a piece of EMT. So they all slid into each other, right? All right? And I figured out how high I wanted it, and then I drilled a hole and I just put a pin in it, so I have 30 foot tall uh, poles on each end. And what I did what I did in my house is I took a, a four by six uh, pressure treated post, like a fence post, I just, put, I just dug a hole and I just put some fence post concrete in there, let it dry overnight, and then I drilled a hole about this far up on the thick pipe, right? And it and I used a half inch galvanized bolt, went right through it, I lean it over, put on my hardware, make it up, I walk over, and if I have a friend to help me, he has a push up board with a V in it, and he pushes it up and I pull it down, and it goes whoosh, and now it's freestanding 30 feet. Is three three freestanding thirty feet. So I have thirty to thirty-two feet on these ends. Actually, two of them. But they're supported by the pole. You so supported by the pole. Yeah. Yep. And then the top, the my tallest one, I, I took another piece. I went down to three. I went down to a three-quarter inch EMT, and I went to one inch and three quarters. I wanted to get to forty feet. So this is forty feet. So I'm a quarter wavelength all the way at forty meters. On the ends and on the center feet point, I'm really close to a quarter wavelength on 80 meters. And yeah, it did. It did. It was weird. My receive got better. I, I don't. I can't explain it. Same radio. I got. A, I got a 25, 30 year old Kenwood 940. And I, when I got my antenna up higher, yep. and I replaced it, put a piece of coax that went in, and I sat there and I monkeyed with my ballon for like three days till I figured out how to make them. And I used and keep. I. I you can use your. Um, your MFJ guys do this too. You do not have to buy a Rigel or a Siglent or an HP or somebody's Spectrum Analyzer. You don't have to do that. You can use those things for a couple hundred bucks. When you get the thing figured out, you put your ballot in there, and you figure out your length of your coax, go in and turn your receiver on, it's like, holy cow, I hear more stuff. And then you go, and then you start, and you go, you go to transmit. Now, I want to preface this with I've always said, everybody should have a tuner, okay? I bypass my tuner, I go to my resident frequency, I check it, it's perfect. Well, the needle moves a teeny bit, it's, nothing's perfect, but it moves, it's like 1.1, 1.2 on the resident frequency. Then I start moving, I start moving off to this side or this side, go up closer to 39.50, I go down here to 37.50, and lo and behold, it's less than 1.5. It works, it's bandwidth, it's easy at 100 kilohertz. It's a little more. And then when I want to get all, oh, if I want to go down to the CW part of the band, which is pretty dang far, I put my tuner back in and I touch it up. 
Because keep in mind, when you're on your resonant frequency, and I want you guys to hear this, when everything's resonant, everything's working, it's its most efficient, right? And your losses in your cable are least effect on your system. As soon as you get too far off your resonant frequency and you're trying to force this thing to go somewhere it don't want to go, and you're going, and you're fixing the SWR because it's like eight to one, okay, and your super cool uh, PAL star or MFJ tuner fixes the problem, and your transmitter says, thank you very much, I will give you 100 watts into your tuner, and I'm going to give you... from the tuner to the radio. Yep. Yeah. What's, what's, what's yep. downstream of that tuner, it go all to hell, it'll be a 50 to We don't know what it is. We don't, I, don't, I couldn't tell you what the loss between there and there. Right. It's certainly not what the book says. Yeah. There is a coax loss calculator online that has, it's, the math is like huge. I, I don't even know what it is off the top of my head. But you can put in, my feed line is this, my velocity factor is this, my SWR is this, my input power is this, and the thing will go bloop, and it will tell you how much energy you get at your antenna, and it will surprise you. The further off residence you get, the worse it gets. So when you're taking these antennas, and you're bringing, you're pulling them back from the moon to get them to behave, it's not efficient anymore. So we're talking about resident antennas that are made to work on a particular band. So just a little bit more, we won't go too crazy. Here's my 80 meter antenna. What if I did this? And I put another one on here. Can I put my little windy things? What if I put a 40 meter antenna on here? You asked me. It work. Is that gonna work? Yeah. <clears throat> if I, you're, yeah. You're if I make this, if I go to 40 meters and I make this resonant, what if I just doubled that frequency or close to it, right? To get my center point and tune, which would be too high, by the way. It'd be you know, 3,500, so it'd be a little too high. But we want to. It'd be really, really close, wouldn't it? It'd be within a window that we could use. So how do you select the 40 over the 80? Say that again. How do you select yeah. using the 40? You don't have to. You don't have to. It's it automatic. automatic. This is your automatic antenna switch. <coughs> you, what happens is, is you, if you cut the coax the right length, and you cut these cables correctly, and they're installed like we previously talked about, and you put, you put this in here correctly, or a Bowen, when you send up 3.85 megahertz, it doesn't see that. It divorces it. We'll find a way. And then when it comes up here, and you're putting in 7 megahertz, it sees the red <coughs> antenna, and it divorces the green <coughs> antenna. You said cut the coax the right way. We're getting to that. Okay. We haven't got there yet. Yes. Yes. Years ago, I went to a station down near Watsonville. The guy was a very high-powered chaser for uh, skip and such. Mm -hmm. And his antenna, he had cut to the highest frequency in the band. Then he had cut, cut little pigtails with clips on them. Oh, yeah. yeah we know. Oh. And he had a bucket lift that That's he bought cheap saying. and fixed up. Mm -hmm. And he'd go out to his antenna if he wanted to go up go down, say, 20 kc, he take the 20 kc pigtail, go out and <clears> put it <throat> on the end of the antenna, in both ends. Yep, that works. And be perfectly tuned. Mm -hmm. That's the that. hard way to Hardly do like it. Don John, anybody who Don, you have a question? Yeah, John, right out of what I did. 80 meters is a pretty wide frequency spectrum. It is. It's hard to get matches. 3.5 3. to 4, you build an three, antenna, yeah. You build the antenna for porn or foam, and you trim it, and then you have your insulator there. Mm -hmm. And then you add on to the insulator a short, it only takes about this much to take you down to the middle of the CW band. The tail. And you have clip. Clip mm -hmm. it on there. I've had some on my fence right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it works good. It works good. Because your main radiator moves the resonant is frequency all here. Down. Moves the resonant right. frequency down. Don Johnson, the, screw, what he said, the screwdriver but, antenna guy, yeah. did exactly that. He literally walked, he only used 100 watts in his house, he never used an amplifier. Super nice guy. Did anybody ever get to meet Don Johnson? Lunch. Yeah, he, you know, he lived at a Sparto, yes. right over here. And he dead now, but he was a great guy. Super nice guy, super nice guy. Anyway, hold on a in his shop. So, you could do that. And then if you wanted to, wanted to get a little crazier, you could add that third antenna that everybody wants. A little shorter, right? 
What's this one going to be? 20 meters. Yep. That's the same thing. So now, my particular setup, and you don't have, and just keep in mind, everybody's setup's going to be different. Everybody going to finesse theirs different. This is just what I do. I'm not telling you you have to do it this way. I'm saying, but stick to the resonant frequent, stick to the resonant antenna plan when you build your first wire antenna, because it's just easier. Okay, and it works. <coughs> You're going to hear people, and they're going to hear you. If you build the weird uh, psychopathic squirrely. Uh, cylindrical round antenna thing, they're complicated. Yes? All right, you say you, you want to work all folks, all directions. Now, we know that a dipole, it, it, it transmits it, it, this it, way. It, it can. I had a fellow back in, back in uh, this, this, this out of Colorado there that had, uh, by the Colorado Springs area, what he did is he, mm -hmm. put, he, he put a, uh, this is a Mars frequency, mm -hmm. he put, uh, Put a, put a dipole going north and south and no, dipole going west. You, did, you can't. And they had, and all of them had to be dead nuts right on. I mean, the freak, all the things had to right. be dead right on. Yeah. But but the, this way here, it's uh, this. And I said, how is it possible that something could transmit this way and that way at the same time? And uh, you phased them right. They what? You phased them right. You know what, guys? That's that the the the, the dipole. If we were to look at it from looking straight down on on, on the on the uh, try to look at it from the bird's side eye view. bird's eye view, and we just go like this, yeah. the dipole tends tends to be a cardioid pattern. Mm -hmm. That's exaggerated, but kind of like that. Okay, mm -hmm. it's, that's not perfect. You can look it up on the on the internet. They draw much better pictures. Actually, actually. pretty close. So. And you can keep in mind that piece of wire radiates all the way around it, 360 degrees, right? So there's junk coming off this wire. So the whole point is for us guys that only can have one or two antennas, <laughs> when you when you lower that down, that inverted V, now some of that junk that was going up in the sky straight is going that way. And just for as an example, I live here, and um, Fort Worth, Texas is somewhere here. I'm geographically challenged, so this is probably off. So my 40 meter antenna is, I mean literally, funky. Do you think that's aimed at Fort Worth, Texas? I talked to my son. W5 VLF all the time. His antenna is a little bit more oriented towards me. His is like this. His goes almost north and south. Mine is a messed up inverted V that goes kind of east and west. And when the band, when it's, when it's, when it's the radio god say it's okay for us to talk, he is freaking 10 over at my house. And I'm 10, 15 over at his house. I always have to be one more to come down. <laughs> but he, uh, we talk, and it's the wrong direction. So the answer is yes, they are directional. Does that mean you're never going to hear somebody from the other direction? No. It just means if you had your antenna system built in the oriented way, you could probably hear them better. That's why we make beams. But the wire antennas, mine is just stuck up there, and it's just like however I could get it. Because let's face it, some of our properties, we, we it is what it is. Guys, it's getting late. I got about ten more minutes. If I move quickly, you want to keep going? Sure. Yeah. Am I, are we getting enough information? No, no one's actually sleeping tonight, so that's good. So, is there any more questions on on this part of it? I just got one okay, one more. Okay, my yard is sixty feet. Wide. Okay, that's good enough. Let's move on. <laughs> sixty feet wide. Now, now I've tried. I tried. 60, just, say sixty feet wide. Sixty feet. Okay. Wide. okay. City lot. Okay. So, so I ran my, my legs out, huh? well, and I got to go someplace. So I got to make a turn and go back and follow the fence. Right. Line. Right. Then, then the problem is that I have a two-story stucco house to the south mm -hmm. of my antenna. So you're getting kind of and it, blocked and it, in. And, it, uh, and, I, and there are certain areas down the Caribbean that I did. No way in hell I can reach because I got to shoot through the house. But, but it works like gangbusters going to the north and to the, to the south Pacific and mm -hmm. that way. But, uh, yeah, you got a house block here. First tip, we'll talk about this later, but if you have a situation where you can't get 61 feet, 
and you you only got 40 feet here, but you want 80 meter antenna. Put some coils on it. Where did I put them? Well, I almost gave the coils. <laughs> I almost gave it away. Where did I put the coil? <laughs> Who said? Middle. Got yeah, the middle, right in the middle of the leg. Yep, you put it right here. So you put this coil right here, so this one and this one, and you get them as close as you get this and that. Super duper quadruper balance. And then you get this as close as you can, and you can still trim it up a little bit. And that shortened antenna, you can take this down to 51 feet, 45 feet. And is it as efficient as a full sized antenna? It no. Know, so. But is it is the guy, if you're running, you know, like a couple hundred watts and talking to your friend in Nevada, can he, and the, and the band's open anyways, can he hear the difference between you and the guy that has a full sized one? No. No. That's why they make that, something like that for mobile antennas. <laughs> yes. You're saying if you don't have that space, then you. Yeah. The coil. You could use the coil to make it short to make it shorter, but yeah. then the antenna thinks it's the antenna, yeah, it thinks it's longer. You're Got tricking it. it. You're tricking it. That's a trick. Do we we won't there's an actual there's another chart and another another bunch of math formulas which we will not I was go about into. to say because then again you have to think about the turns you have to put on it, right? It's about thirteen micro is what there's it is. There's a guy that's got a website. Count it. That put it through the wire before you walk. There's a website yes. that will calculate that whole thing out for you. It tells you the yeah. size of the PVC pipe, how many turns, what the wire mm -hmm. size is, whether it's mm -hmm. a or a Yeah, Bruce and I did the hard way. No, there, that's, that's the way to do it. So you can't you can do that. So let's move on to this. But before we move on to that, we're going we're gonna to assume that this, from this point on, let's pretend that we bought or built the proper balance, okay, guys? We're not gonna talk about balance anymore tonight because that's a whole other subject. So what did we talk, what did, what did we talk about? <coughs> Look, we got our antenna built and we're thinking it's pretty good and we magically uh, reached up there with our 61 foot arm and we go, well, that's correct. Well, what if your arm isn't 61 feet? What do you need to do? And let's divorce the extra antennas for this, this point, okay? So I don't want to confuse the issue. Topic. So we're still hooked up here. And we wired it better in real life. This is right on top. This this the balance is is this piece of equipment. Yeah, let's draw it. I, I got two seconds. I can draw it. That is where they're normally at. <clears throat> so we did, we, we bought the cool balance or we made it or who knows. So this is the actual cool balance. Yeah. And our coax is now plugged right into it. So this is your ballon that has the uh, eyelets on the side, Ugh. the wires hooked to it. Okay, so I can't reach up there 61 feet to measure this. Someone who brought that out? Somebody told me that. What am I going to do? Does anybody know? Think about it for a second. Use your antenna tuner. You would use your antenna tuner, but how do I know what that really is? I need to make, we're going to move this along. I need to make my cable should be one half wavelength long. So I need to make that a half wavelength long. So how, and the reason we do that is if you make your cable at a particular, for, and, we're, and we're still at 3.85 megahertz, okay? That's our resonant frequency. So we're calculating for that. So, we need to make that a half wavelength long, so that it, when you look at it, at that frequency, the impedance of this cable from this end to that end is infinite. If it was perfect, it's not, but it, it's, it's not there. So what that means is, is my coax can affect the reading of my perfect antenna, or my imperfect antenna that I'm trying to fix. So if I had the wrong length of coax here, I couldn't really tune my antenna perfectly. I could tune it, and it would probably get tuned. It's going to come down. But is it going to be as efficient as if I had this at a half wavelength? And the answer is no. So now here's where the little teeny bit of math comes in. we got to, like, what to figure out what a half wavelength is, what do you think we would use? <coughs> With that wavelength, huh? half wavelength, yeah. incorrectly cut, uh -huh. Would that affect round loops? It'll make everything weird. 
Oh, I, I, I it, it won't. It won't help it. No, but I mean, would, would it? Would it, if it was way out of whack? Would it induce uh, energy in other places you doesn't want to be? Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, RF can go places you don't want it to go. Oh, when things yeah. aren't, aren't right. <laughs> you figure it's that can you read? Eighteen feet. Eighteen point five feet or something to call that. Nope. Eighteen point five feet on eighty meters is like holy cow. Can't use it. Well, you said it has to be a half wavelength. You said a half wavelength. How long is it? 122 feet. 122 feet, roughly, right? No. Half wavelength? Yeah. 40 meters. Lots of factors. Yeah. Lots of factors. Lots of factors. Lots of factors. A lot lower on the coax. Yeah. I'm done. We're getting there. What else have we got to do? We now know that needs to be a half wavelength. We consider our velocity factor of the cable, right? So what do we do? We do. We Do we use 468? This no. is a trick question. No. Because that already yeah, has the 492 velocity factor. Use the 492, and you would already know what your, you'd have to figure out what your coax already, what kind so of coax you have. I, I need velocity. to learn to write. No, oh, you said 492. Use 492. Use 492. Oh. Or what you can use is you can also a quarter wavelength would be would be uh, 246. Okay. If you're looking for the quarter, we're not. We're looking for that. So now, and we're going to multiply, we're going to divide that by the frequency in megahertz, right? Mm -hmm. So we take 492 divided by frequency in megahertz, right? And then we're going to multiply that times the velocity factor of our cable. And if we were using just the off-the-shelf RG8 cable, it's most likely 0.66. No kidding. A give or take, you know. I, mean, I don't know what it really is. You got to look it up, mm -hmm. or you got to measure it. So you, so you know what it is. So who's got the calculator? Let's do it. Let's do 492 divided by the by 3.85, and multiply it times 0. 0.66. Who's got Who's got the cal? Right. It's going to be an interesting that. number, and that's when then we're going to do this. That will be yeah, times 0. 0.66. Yeah. yeah. It's 492 over the force of the 3. 492 3, divided 3, by 3.85. 8434. Times. 84.34. No, you take 492 divided right. by 3.85. Yeah. Multiply it times 0. 0.66. Yeah. 84. 84.35. So about 85 feet of cable. Right. So for that frequency, with that cable, with that velocity, Factor. If you hooked it up right here, and you came down here, and you put your little meter right there, it would reflect whatever this impedance is back here. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Yeah, it would not standard. It would better draw. It would not sign way to let them see it. So, I'm, I'm, well, I'm trying to. What I'm trying to say is your cable length. I want to. I want it to not affect my measurement between here and here. So if my cable length is the proper one half electrical wavelength, right? You won't see it. You that's, you won't see the coax. So it'd be like it's like a it's like it's a, like a conduit yeah. with no resistance. Right. So then when I come out here and I connect a perfect 50 ohm load. That's all you see. You'll see 50. I'll right. see 50 back see here. 50 ohms. Perfect, right? right? At that frequency. Yeah, but your radio is never going to be at perfect. Doesn't it's, matter. It, it doesn't matter. No, and it, well, it, it matters. We're, we're, keep in mind, guys, we're talking about a resident antenna mm -hmm. that has a usable bandwidth of 100 to 200 kilohertz, depending on how you make it, okay? So with that in mind, this will do the same thing for you. When you start moving your moving off frequency one way or the other, it's going to change a little bit, and I'm going to show you on that meter in about a minute. So what's cool about this is that somebody brought up the head, they have a dipole with ladder line. Who's got that? Or did it? Okay. So if you took this antenna, without the balance, I'm going to do this for just real quick. And you took ladder line, 
that really low loss stuff, it's 450 ohms, right? Give or take. And, I, and we're not going to redo the calculation, but we, we, we looked our ladder line up and we go, it's 0.93. So we figure out it's 0.93, we come out, and it's X number of feet long at that frequency. I can take this ladder line, hook it up to there, and it'll reflect that impedance right there. Again, you're playing with the, with the, with the uh, mm -hmm. uh, velocity factor. Yep. yep. For, that, for, that for that frequency. Make it more roll right. right. And, and if you are careful about it, then you could take this, and you could do put your one to one or do whatever you want, go into your go into your PAL star MFJ XYZ tuner that has the balance line on it. Not and, actually, you, and you got yourself a, a pretty cool antenna with mm -hmm. very low loss between here and there. And by the way, and we won't go into this gory detail, but now when I move off frequency, I move off this frequency, my loss, this handles the loss even better than the coax. Coax, we use coax because it's convenient. We use coax because we can, we can run it through the tree, over the hills and through grandmother's backyard, into my window, and it works. You can't do that with a ladder line. So with the like ladder line, part of, part of the if you're replacing the coax, you're replacing the ladder line with the coax. It's, so would that be the 85 feet that you would Well, out? these, these, we're talking, either one of these can be a half wavelength, either one of them can be used. But you know, Corey, I, I, I'm gonna, we're going to race this. The reason we're going to race that yeah, is because we use coax 99% of the time. So we're coming in coax, so we figured out that coax needed to be about 84, 85 feet. Right. The calculation you just made for that one line, is that, is that the distance you need to hook up to your rig? Yes. Yes. You go from here. So that's your third, actually your third leg. Your rig. Yeah. Or your tester. Oh, keep in mind, too, when you set your system up, you got it. Antenna, and you made everything perfect, so it reads perfect right there, right? What's the next thing it plugs into? Very tuner. first thing. Tuner. Exactly. Because your tuner is going to represent that 50 ohms right here, and it's going to take care of that extra length and goofy stuff, whether you got an amplifier, yeah. extra coax, your radio, your whatever you decided to your hook into. Whatever. If you do, if you do yeah. this, though. And you say you have a some real teeny yeah. little backyard like mine. Is oh shit! I got this 80, 80, 80, 80 yeah. feet of cable. You can still do it. Eighty five feet of cable. Yeah. And then, then how many? I mean, you go over to your friend's house. He says, "Well, I got eighty five feet of cable, only twenty feet of the antenna." So you make a ro roll. Don't roll it. Don't coil it. Don't no, coil it. Don't, you don't. You, you, it doesn't. It's not that big a deal. <laughs> what do you do? But don't yeah, don't, don't do, do it. it. Let's just start. Let's start. Let's get our business, guys. Let's get awake. Okay. Are we still are we still awake? Yeah, yeah. You, it's yeah. Just, I got yeah, about five or ten more know, minutes. It it'll, what's that? <laughs> we okay? So this is a piece of coax that's you know off the shelf. Oh, okay. It's a, it, I ordered it off Amazon. It's the RG8X, the mini stuff. Yep. Then you can look on your chart. It's got decent loss. So I, I actually like this cable. It's a double shielded. It works great. And I'm going to leave it rolled up because I'm lazy. So I'm going to turn this on. And, and the only reason I have two of these here is to show you. First of all, the can you guys see this thing okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then I'll tilt this up like that so you can see a little bit better. Okay. Oh, nice. This is the uh, MFJ version, and this is the newer Comet version. They, notice that it goes from 1.8 to 500 megahertz, and it is. Oh, I'm lost. Anyways, it goes to 1.8 to 500 megahertz. It's pretty much continuous, and um, I think it doesn't skip over 220, does it? Mm -hmm. This is a this is a great box. So that's a choice. This is the MFJ is a choice. What and model is it? I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what model. Two fifty nine. Mine's a two fifty nine. Uh, two sixty nine. Two sixty nine. Okay. And this one because this one has the goofy four forty that I don't like, but the Comet the CAA five hundred, it does a really nice job of going from HF all the way up to the seventy centimeter band. And it's only a maybe 50, 60 bucks more. The MFJ now makes one like that. But let's talk about this cable right here, okay? So what I've done is this right here is a kind of a pursuit. Uh, I can't even see it. This right here is kind of a, a okay 50 ohm dummy load, and I put it on a T. But what I'm going to do so you guys can see, 
what we're really trying to accomplish is, let's assume for this conversation that our antenna that we're working on is exactly 50 ohms, okay? And we want it to work on all frequencies. We want it to work on a particular frequency. So I'm using this dummy load, and look at that. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. 48 ohms, zero reactants, one to one. And I start turning the frequency knob. Doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything. Yeah. See, until I get way up in frequency. I'm up above 30, I'm up above the HF band. Now I'm going to go, now I'm up in the two meter. Close two meter band. It's still at 46 ohms at 1.1. So I'd say that for HF below 30 megahertz, that's a pretty dang good uh, dummy load. So I'm going to be happy with that, okay? So we're going to use that as our reference. And now we're going to take a T and stick it in the top of this thing. And we want to try to figure out, without any goofy calculations, we have some coax laying around. And I go, man, will that, made it box. Will that work on 40 oh, meters? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to hook it up to that port right there. So I'm putting it in parallel with this meter, with that dummy load. So if this were a half wavelength at Set, we're, going, we're shooting for seven megacycles, by the way, 40 meters, okay? okay. If this were a half wavelength, what do, you, what do you think my meter would do? 50 ohms. And it would dip, be no SWR, right? Mm -hmm. So let's find out if this is a good piece of coax that I got from Amazon to use at that frequency with my simple dimple meter. Amazon. Okay, so now let's put it on... <clears throat> I gotta make sure all my connections work. <coughs> but it won't work. Okay. Now, gotta get the glare out there. <coughs> There's six. That's, oh, there it goes. Oh, what's this? Eight. Eight. Let's go down to seven. I can't see that. Right. Would that be the best choice? A little bit high, but not bad. It's, it's, it's not bad, it's not bad right? Can't see the impeach there. Okay. What How's that? We're looking for them. We're looking for, where is this perfect half wavelength? Oh, 41 is the impeach. Keep going up. Keep going up. Keep going up. I'm going to dip it. No, you're not dip yet. Resistance on the Yeah, look, I got zero reactants. I got one to one or 45 ohms. Oh, okay. So now, so it's eight megahertz, just about eight megahertz. So it's about eight megahertz. So this is not going to be. This isn't the best thing. It's 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 really resonant at eight megahertz. So what could I do to fix that? Shorten it. Make it shorter. Make it long, longer. longer. Make it longer. So I'm going to just take this random piece of coax. I'm going to stick it on here and see what the meter does. Greater than. Now, at, I got a loose connection here somewhere. Come on, there it is. I just gotta get the glare out of it. It's loose. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, there, there, there it is. So, now I'm gonna take the frequency and we're gonna lower it. Yeah. Now, where are we at? You guys see that? Yeah. So, where are we at? <gasps> So I want to be resonant really close to 7, so I'm at 1, there's 7.1, so that's, is it usable at 7? Yeah. yeah. Now I'm going to come up here, oh gee I went outside the 40 meter band. So now, what, what do we say, it's 73? Yeah. I'm above 73? What do you think that, think that cable would work good? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, where, where are you, where are you getting your numbers like that? Okay, <laughs> you guys, look. Stupid tea. By the way, don't use cheap stuff. <laughs> it's in the top window up there. Okay. okay, see the frequency is in the top left. Yeah, 7308. 7308. The SWR is 1.0 is to 1. The impedance is 45 ohms. Yeah. And the reactance is zero. Is zero. So this would be a great piece of coax to use on 40 meters. 
Would it be a great piece of coax to use on 80 meters? No. no. I don't know. Dial it in. Okay. So one of the one of the dials, three dials down below tells. Well, there's 3.1. Look at that. Doesn't look too good. It's horrible. Yeah, it's really bad. And look at the look at the resistance. It's it's three, three ohms. The reason it's three ohms, and we can talk about this later. Quarter wave, this is a quarter wavelength piece, right? It's half. So a quarter wavelength now becomes a quarter wavelength stub that looks like a short at that frequency. So now we've got a quarter wavelength piece, piece for 80 meters that so looks like a, a short, and it's not it's not gonna it's not gonna work good. Yes. Short the yeah. Pardon me? Short the yeah. Yeah, then it, it, it reverses. <laughs> but we're we're um so we we now we don't have a piece of coax that's quite right quite right for 40 meters, but what if we went to 20 meters? Let's try 20. Yeah, this one, this T connector is horrible. The other way? Yeah, it's the other way. Um, oh, you can do T connectors still there. There it is. There it goes. Yeah. It looks like it's good. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, there it is. There's, there's, there we are. We're at there. 14 dot. Right around 14.3, 14.25. Not terribly bad. Not terribly bad. Now keep, now keep in mind, we, we, we grabbed scrap coax and we moved it down all the way down to 7, right? 6.97. We'd really want to move it up if we were being really particular to like 7.1 or something. Take that extra little stub off. Yeah, yeah. that stub's probably doing it. Well, let's get, the answer is, yeah, but it throws it off too far the way. Oh, really? Yeah. See? Oh, yeah, 1.4. Yeah, see, now I'm going to dip it. Yeah. See, now it's at 16. Yeah. Just so you know, I, I did this at home. I don't want to be embarrassed in front of everybody. I checked it. But, so if it worked as a half wavelength on 40, 40 but you're shifting it, so now you're full width. On what? 20. No worry. We are. Keep in mind, even multiples of a half wavelength work. So, so as soon as you get to, you could go 2, 4, 6, 8. But you, you can't go five, way. seven, or you, you can't, can't go. You can't go below it. No, not on this stuff. So that's a piece of coax right there. Now, just for the heck of it, I threw this in. I threw this in. Forty to eighty is a new multiple. What? It is, but we went the wrong direction. That's what this piece of. What it is is you went from a half. This is a piece of RG8, thicker, lower loss. I happen to know it's fifty feet three inches. Okay. And this piece is about 50 feet 1 inch, okay, with that little adapter on it. And we're going to put this guy on, providing my, um, my adapter works right. And it does. Okay, there you go. Look at that. 147 and... Yeah, that's good. And look, can I use this up to 7.1? Can I use it to 7.2? Oh, look at that. That piece is really, really good through the whole 40 meter band, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. What if we went up to here? Uh, can I get there from here? I hope so. You're 14. Yeah, I'm going for. Oh, uh, yeah. Went the wrong way. This knob is, there it is. Look at that. Yeah, nice. Yeah, look at that, really nice. 46. 46, 47, huh. 14, 2. Look how, look how yeah, that's holding me. Okay. So it's just yeah, better coax, zero, zero reactants. Yeah, look at that. And then now you start making some reactants. Okay, so now, what are those sweep dials down below tell me? I mean, we're looking at, you're looking at one's SWR, one one's impedance. Yeah, one's SWR, exactly, one's impedance. So when you dip it, this is a half wavelength, and then the multiples are working for us. Now, the, what do you think the difference between, they're both 50 feet, they're within one inch of each other. But, what, but they're wider band, uh, wide, better wire, bigger wire, wider yeah, band diameter. Diameter. What else? Velocity. 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 I happen to know <coughs> this is 0.8, this is 0.73. Why it's 0.73, I don't know, but it is. And it, 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 it just worked out that way. So now, 
We'll do one more, and then we'll be done, and then I'll hang around for a little bit. Anybody has questions? If I can answer them, I will. It depends on the insulation. It's home. It's all over the map. You guys can look that up. Velocity factor is exactly what Brian just said. There's a chart. If you care to look it up, I'm not going to bring it, but it shows foam, polyurethane, poly, what's a what question mark on it is. And, te and Teflon, all this stuff they use, right? And it tells you what approximate velocity factor a cable would have made with that insulation type material. So here's this piece is questionable. We think it's right at 100 feet, plus or minus a couple of inches. So that's a really common length too. So Ryan is going to dip it for us and we'll get it down in the 80 meter band. Down to 80? Yeah, take it down to 80. See where we're at. Okay. Two more. Second slope below. No the problem. This happened. It might be. It looks like it's six point. Did you find out what your real yeah, world 6 is? Yeah, six point three. You wish you didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, what frequency is it? Six point three megahertz. I get one. It's one to one. Very nice. Oh, keep going down. You're, yeah, you're at the second. You're at two two wavelengths. Keep going. You may have to flip the dial. I don't know if it. Keep going, yeah. Go down to the next range, I mean. To make it go down. The, there you go, now try that. Now try to go to three something. There it goes. Coming. There we go. For three. Three one. Three one. Three one, three, one, three two. Okay. So we're 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 right there at three one, three two. So this piece of cable at a right around a hundred feet. It's too short. SCSWR is a meter. Yeah. And then the you But it also gives it to you here. Here's the SWR. Yeah. So what could we what would we do to fix it? Here. This, this and this trend. experiment, yeah. we'll just add this piece yeah, of cable. Makes it easy for we'll just look at something here. Yeah, and this is going up whether you're going this way or so, that way. So, right. Brian, what's it doing now? I added like six feet of cable. Went up to 1.5 to 1. Yeah, so let's dip it and see where it's at now. Go back down again. You should go up in frequency closer to in the band, uh huh? I go too high? You're now down 2.9. Yeah, I made it longer. Yeah, you made it longer. Okay. So, you had 2 so I made it longer and it went down in frequency. So if you guys were, let's say you, 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 you want to make a feed line right or as close as you can for 80 meters and 40 meters, you do what we did, hook it up to the meter and you put one connector on the end, right? You roll it out and you make it a little bit long. Do your calculations and you make it a little long and then you just trim it. And we're being picky by the way. And then you get the thing dead on to the resident frequency that you're looking for. And I'm not saying go home and pick 83.5, pick what works for your station. And then you trim the cable. And now from the output of your tuner to your feed point on even half wave multiples, that coax does very little effect. It, the, the, the loss is still there, but it's impedance wise, it's reflecting what your antenna is doing. So now I can measure it, I can tune it, I can clean this thing up and it works a little better. So that's what happens. So you get somebody who just innocently orders this offline, 50 foot, hooks it to their, all they want is a 40 meter antenna and they hook it up and they have trouble getting the thing to match. This is the reason. And another reason would be what if you put your antenna up and your 40 meter antenna is only up like 30 feet, right? You run it, which is about right. And you run it down and you go, man, I'm just going to run into my ham shack. And you put 39 feet of cable. That'd be off too. You're better off to, to, to get it closer. Are we being a little bit nitpicky? Yes. But if you want to do it right, you, on the HF stuff, you go in half wavelength multiples. And you use that little bit of math, and it'll get you a lot closer. So what do you do with a fan dipole when you have multiple frequencies? Okay, that's a that's another problem, which we can solve. What you got to do is the basic. You find your center frequency. That's what I was saying. It might not be that. So if I did seven megahertz, the next one would be fourteen, and this one down here would be three point five, right? So if I did that, three point five seven fourteen. Bottom of the band, bottom of the band, bottom of the band. 
So what I probably want to do is I want to move it up. So let's say I wanted uh, I wanted my center on my 40 meters to be not 7,000, but let's say I wanted it 7,150. Okay. So what's half of 7,150? Um, I don't want to do that. In my head. 35. 35. 35. 30, 30, 30, 3-5-2-5. What's going to be? My bad. 3-5-6-5 or something like that. Yeah. 7-1-50. Is it intermission? Is that what's happening? Yeah. We're going we're to do this. We're going to be done. This lasted too the long. The big white sorry. hook comes out and no, drags Kevin no, off. You got everybody's attention. 35-75. Okay. 35-75. Okay. What's double 7150? 14-3. 14.3. Three. Yeah. Okay, so that's kind of where you're going to have to you're going to have to live. And what you can do is you can move this a little up to where you're up around 37, around 3700, or even 3750. And then this guy here, you can probably leave him just about right because 40 meters has been really forgiving when you measure it. It's on my stuff, and I leave this alone at 14.3. And what will happen is, it'll be dead on here, and it'll be a teeny bit off here and a teeny bit off here. And when you get, if you get it right, and you can, it'll be, um, it'll be very forgiving. Because you've got a couple hundred kilohertz to move back and forth. Remember when we put it on? Let's do it. Let's look here. Here is our, oh, that's great. You can see that perfect now. So this resident frequency happened, whoops, I'm going to reset Mode. Yeah, with the sleep. Okay. So that happens to be 2.8, right? Well, I'm just going to move it up until there's three, we'll come up on three. There's 1.1. I mean, look at my reactants. It's like seven is almost nothing. So now I'm at over three. I mean, I moved uh, quite, a, quite a bit. Now let's go back down to our, where it dipped down. 28. I mean, I'm going to go over 100 kilohertz. Easy. From my center. Now I'm coming down this way. Okay. You You're exactly right. So, you know, I got... Where do you think? 200. It should be symmetric. It should be the yeah, same. Yeah, it should. When you go same above and down. down or below. Mm -hmm. So I had a couple hundred kilohertz of bandwidth. Easy. So if you... Well, and even though you're still 1-1. One, one. You're, you're exactly. You know, so you huge. you have you you've got it so close now that you could probably not even use a tuner. Which, by the way, on mine when I go home and I work on 40, 80, and 20, I can operate almost the whole band, not 80 because it's too wide, on uh, without a tuner if I want to. And I never get an SWR of above 1.5 because I just monkeyed with it. It didn't take me a couple hours. It took me a few couple of days. I played with the math, I played with the cable lengths, and I monkeyed with it until, and I just took my little analyzer and I turned the knob and I went, where are we at? And look at that, look, look at that, I hit the wrong button. By the way, look at all the stuff this, those little boxes do. So here we are at 2.1, get my big fat paw out of the way, let's just dump it down here. Let's take it to 1.5. I get to 180, go ahead. I mean, look at that. We're still within a usable a, a distance. I mean, 38, 39 ohms, we're within like 12 ohms of being on, on dead on anyways. And our SWR is 1.5. And our radios and our everything will we'll, we'll, we'll be happy with that. Now, that's, that's considering that your antenna was tuned right, too. Because that's going to affect it as well. So what's, what the key issue is, is get your coax tuned to the frequent resident frequency you're trying to hit, and you try to get it on 80, 40, and 20. You try to get it to hit in a normal, in a, as close as you can, and then your bandwidth will be okay. Do you need the dummy load? Yeah. To do oh, this? You do the, to do, do the, the test. Yeah. yeah. By the way, that dummy load is like three or four or five bucks to the swap meet. Sometimes they're a buck. Yeah. Kevin, uh, also your connectors also have some effect on your also. Yeah, at the lower frequencies, we're, we're talking everything below 30 megs, okay. which is really quite forgiving. As soon as we go up above, you know, I don't know, 50, especially two meters right. and higher, stuff gets stuff gets more critical. 
we get a lot more forgiveness down here at the HF band. So this dummy load is just a, literally, it's a, I think I got it for free. A guy gave it to me somewhere. You go, go to the swap meets and get yourself a cheapy dummy load. You can use this meter. You can use a Comet meter. You can use, uh, help me out, the other one that you have, Brian. The Rig Expert? Rig Expert, you can use that one. There's also one on eBay that's even, it's only HF. It only goes up to like 30. Yes. Yeah. 30 megahertz. Yeah. And they're like 100 bucks or something. Yeah. They're 78, they're, they're very cost effective. There's a kit form, and, you, and before Channing quits doing business with us, order one, you know, <laughs> and uh, get, get one for under $100. And it'll, it'll do the same darn thing. So, you guys got any questions? Thanks for watching, and make sure you hit that subscribe button so you know when a new video comes out.